Welcome everyone to the February 2016 New User Training Class for the Transmark Foundation. My name is Rudy Potenzone. Uh, I work at the Foundation on Marketing Group. Uh, welcome you to this training class. Uh, the trainer today will be Victoria Andriva from Rancho Biosciences. And we thank BT Communications for providing the uh, computer cloud uh, version of the platform for us to use for this training class. Uh, this year, there, we've expanded our training program a bit, and so we are now uh, offering a few different types of classes, including uh, information on uh, loading data uh, and some of the advanced workflows in a lot more detail. And I uh, encourage you to consider some of these other classes um, that are on the website, and you can see uh, where they are, uh, how they're scheduled throughout the year. Um, I would like to offer a, a couple of uh, ask a couple of um, questions of you. Uh, first of all, I mean this is a go to webinar. Everyone is on mute right now. Uh, if you have a problem or if you have a question as we go through, raise your hand. We'll try to address them uh, at, a, at an appropriate time during the session, um, and uh, we, there will be time for questions at the end to help us understand better um, what your needs are and, and who's taking the class. I'd like to ask a, a couple of polls. Uh, and so if you see on the screen, you should see a question. Uh, have you used the Transmart platform before? And if you could just click one of those answers, we appreciate it. And most of you have voted and it uh, sounds like um, two thirds of you have in fact used the platform before and about a third have not. That's great, thank you. And then the, um, the second question is, can you give us an idea of how you will use the platform? Uh, will you use it in your research directly? Um, are you supporting others who will be using the platform? Is it part of an academic research program? Or are you a vendor who actually uh, helps develop the platform? And so about uh, half of you are using, uh, the, are going to be supporting others, and uh, the rest are split between the other three categories. That's interesting. It's great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, now we'll move on to the class. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce uh, Victoria, who will now take us through the, the formal part of the program and uh, show you the system. Victoria? Hi. Hello, everybody. You should be able to take the screen now. Okay. So hopefully everybody can see my uh, screen right now. Looks good. Um, yep. Okay. So let's start um, new user training. And it is uh, mostly f formulated for new users, but hopefully everybody, like people more experienced, also find something useful here. Um, I would like to start with giving some brief overview of uh, Transmart and Transmart Foundation. So um, the first Transfer, Transmart platform was released uh, by j, j as an open source in uh, February 2012. Uh, and in 2013, uh, Foundation was incorporated. So foundation does not, uh, platform does not belong to foundation, but foundation facilitate platform development uh, and also uh, bring community together. So version 1.2 was released in August of 2014, and today training would be um, focused on uh, the, the latest version, 1.2. So idea behind Transmart is bring different type of data together because during uh, research and uh, clinical studies, a lot of data get collected. Um, and basically you have different type of data like treatment, um, some clinical measurements. You might have like different uh, history of um, uh, patients such as like their diet or smoking status. And then also um, uh, nowadays a lot of molecular data also get collected. So you might have um, SNP uh, data or expression data get collected. 
And usually problem is how to link all this phenotypic data to molecular data. And basically, uh, Transmart trying to um, combine this data and find meaningful information uh, from this data without knowing extensive uh, programming skills uh, required to analyze uh, the data. So it also allows to uh, link different groups together and put all data from different groups in one place as well, uh, which also facilitate uh, research and interaction between groups and um, facilitate finding meaningful information. Uh, the way Transmart is built is um, it has a database uh, part sitting like uh, linking on the bottom right now. Uh, and then there is also user interface. And then Transmart data ma uh, mark connects um, and queries a database based on um, a query by uh, scientists. Uh, Transfer, Transmart Foundation uh, website is a good source of additional information and uh, additional training and tutorials if you want to um, find additional information. There is also a um, free platform provided uh, through Transfer, Transmart Foundation. So today we will mostly focus on uh, one data set which uh, uh, this GSE 27831, and it is based on publication about uh, MDA9 synthenin gene expression in um, tuvial melanoma. So it has been shown in this publication that uh, synthenin is associated with uh, metastatic disease progression in tuvial melanoma. And the goal uh, today would be um, to try to reproduce uh, this published finding using Transmart and uh, also see what else we can uh, find uh, uh, in this study using different Transmart workflow. So let me uh, open up Transmart uh, instance and I'm going to use uh, the one provided by Transmart Foundation. So usually default uh, screen when you open is a browse window and you can see on, uh, on top panel it's basically a tool menu task uh, bar and there is several um, uh, tools you can select. So browse, uh, to browse window allows you to uh, look through uh, study metadata, different um, projects and, um, and you focus on mostly metadata or some additional uh, file associated with it. Analyze is the main analysis uh, tool where you can uh, most uh, workflow are uh, located. Um, gene signature, gene list um, tab allows you to add new gene signature and list uh, uh, for, for your use or you can use uh, loaded by other people and it's uh, we're going to uh, focus on that a little bit later uh, to show how and when it might be useful. GWAS tab uh, specifically designed for um, genome-wide association study. Um, so in browse tab you're focusing on uh, metadata so if you click so the way the transmart data are organized you can see on the left there is uh, this study tree and you can see different um, studies available uh, in this instance so if you click uh, any of these uh, pluses on the left you can uh, further open the study and if you can uh, click on the study itself you can see what metadata associated with uh, this study. And then if there is something, some additional data, you can also open it up and if there is some additional files. Um, if you don't know like any specific study and you want to find it, you can use uh, filters. So you can, for example, search the, uh, if you have like some specific term you want to find, you can search in this top window and you can limit it by either doing like 
searching through all fields or limited to specific fields uh, selected here. And then you can uh, start typing um, your term. And for example, like I know that one study studied this gene. So if I select this, I can see now um, it's li like m now I have uh, uh, highlighted two study which uh, mentioned this gene, this biomarker. And you can focus on uh, just these studies. And you see in this field, the active filter list this. Um, now you uh, have filters selected. So trans there is also pre-selected filters in here. So clicking on this filter button will uh, show you also additional filters um, categories. And you again, you can, for example, select by different um, therapeutic domain. Let's say we want to see uh, what studies uh, specifically for cancer related. and um, then you can select it. Um, you can uh, clear a uh, filter by either clicking this X here, or you can hit clear, and it will remove the filter. Um, so if, let's say, you open some study and you're looking at the data, and now you want to get from metadata, you want to get into uh, actual sample level data, if this exists, you can see that uh, in this window it's saying that you can open it, in, open it in Analyze View. So clicking on this button will bring you into Analyze View and then now you can see what uh, sample level data are available for this study. But you can see that um, you only see this one study. You don't have uh, other studies loaded here uh, uh, display because you do have filter uh, selected. So if you clear it, now we can see uh, differently. And um, you can see different uh, study loaded in uh, this Transmart instance. Um, and again, it's again an organized um, in consistent way, so it's easier to um, orient yourself and uh, you can easily find data when you're looking for them. So again, you have different um, broader, like private study, public study. And then if you click and open it, then you can see individual study. Once you get into individual study, again, you can see um, different type of data loaded. You have subject data, such as demographics. Um, so for this study, we have sex and age available. Uh, we have medical history available. Separate tab is clinical data, where usually data collected uh, through clinical tri trial would be loaded. And then there is um, expression data, this mRNA data, and um, available here. So depending what type of data is available, uh, you can also see if it's um, what type of data um, available. So there is three type of data which um, could be found in Transmart. One, it's categorical. You can see that uh, if there is ABC up front, uh, which means that this is categorical data. So for example, there is yes or no metastasis in these patients um, categories. Uh, for numerical data, you can see that one, two, three is in, in front of it, which means that it would be actual uh, measurement uh, or actual number loaded here. And then the third type of data is um, expression, SNP data, basically all molecular data. And you can see that uh, it's this type of high dimension data by this DNA helix sign in front of it. And so depending which type of data is available, uh, Transmart uh, can do different type of uh, statistic. And it's also our uh, behaves a little bit differently. Uh, depending on um, type of data. So uh, how you can use Transmart? So on the right, you can see um, this subfield field. And you can start creating uh, one or two subsets to start to understand uh, type of data available. So um, you don't have to create two subsets. You can use one. For example, if I know nothing about this study, I can just grab whole um, study uh, 
folder and move into subset one. And if I click on summary statistic, it will generate me um, statistical data for this whole study. So I can see what the average age for the whole study, um, what the um, gender distribution for this study, and uh, race in this case is not available. So Transmart automatically will create summary statistic for this study. Um, but usefulness um, is, uh, it comes from uh, ability to generate subsets and start comparing them. So let's say I want to uh, uh, compare subset one as uh, patients with non-metastasis and subset two as the patients with uh, metastasis. And um, you are not limited to three fields. You can start uh, actually add more. So let's say if we have more uh, data available, uh, once you start adding uh, add three fields, then uh, more fields would be appear. So you can make very complicated uh, subsets if you uh, need, uh, if uh, it requires, especially for larger studies where there is uh, a lot of patients. And again, sometimes it might be easier uh, maybe uh, not include all these categories, you might want to exclude something. So in, if you click ex exclude, which means that this now, this patient actually would be excluded from analysis. So depending what you're doing, um, it might be useful. And sometimes might be faster than uh, if you have like large uh, category with different options. Um, so if, let's say, you added some category, but now you want to remove, you can click X. You can also uh, right click uh, on uh, this category and select delete it. It's also will delete. Um, so, and let's say you created very complex uh, subset and you don't want to like miss it and try to like, um, you might want to come back and reproduce it. Or maybe you want to share it with your colleague and uh, get uh, him or her to run uh, on uh, their instance. So what you can do, you can save this subset. So uh, you can enter the name uh, and decide whether or not you want it public, which means that anybody would be able to see it, or you want to keep it uh, private and it's only uh, for you and uh, maybe your colleagues. So um, to find, you find this subset, save subset in this uh, workspace tab here. And uh, you can see like right now there is several uh, subsets created and um, you can edit it by clicking this uh, pencil sign. You can use it. You can email this subset to your colleague. You can delete it. You can make it public. Um, if like originally you thought that you just want to keep it for yourself and then you want to change it, uh, you can do it later. Um, and if you click use, it's, uh, it will warn you that it will uh, make a new comparison tab, but now it's actually created new subset. So it has nothing to do with the study uh, I was doing, it's brand new subset. Um, so let's look at uh, what uh, type of analysis we can do. So a simple analysis would be, again, generate summary statistic where we can compare two subsets uh, between themselves and see if they're similar. And then we can also start adding additional data. For example, I want to know how uh, synthenin expression uh, distributed in this set. So there is this folder uh, created um, for this study, is, is available for this study, um, high or low level of synthenin. So if I grab whole folder here and um, uh, grab it and drop in this middle field, it's actually generate chi-squared statistic um, for categorical data. And we can see that um, distribution of uh, patients with high and low um, level of um, synthenin in uh, these two patient categories. And we can see that actually the difference between them is uh, statistically significant. So it's also automatically calculating p-value. Uh, if we're using um, numerical data, 
So let's say we grab disease-free survival. Now it actually will show us this uh, different type of uh, graph, and now it's using t statistic. So and again, it will calculate um, p-value and uh, tells us that it is a significant difference between these two categories. And again, you will see um, it calculate mean uh, number between um, these. Two for each uh, subset, it also show uh, median and uh, some additional like number of patients in each uh, subset. So depending which uh, type of data um, you're using, Transmart uh, will automatically uh, use the right statistic for it. Um, when you create subsets, you don't have you are not limited to just using categorical data. So let's say I want to uh, use a disease-free survival to create my cohort. So if you uh, grab a numerical data and put in some set one, Transmart now asks you what you want to do. So and you have basically um, three options. You can say I don't want to use as it's as numerical value. I just want to say like I want to look at these patients for which data are available. So sometimes it's possible that maybe uh, you have different, like uh, some data not available for all patients, just subsets. So you might just limit um, this way. You can also do by high-low flag, or you can actually use numerical value. And if you select numerical value, it will ask how you want to um, basically select it. Um, but I have no idea how this data looks, so I don't know what value to enter. So you can actually see uh, data distribution by hitting show uh, histogram. And now you can actually see that uh, there is distribution between 500 days to 2,000 days, and there is uh, some patients uh, with low survival and um, high survival. So let's say I won't create compare samples, uh, patients' data from patients which survive less than a thousand days, and then create second subset, um, which now would be greater or equal to 1,000 days. So, um, so again, uh, you, if you hit summary statistic, uh, Transmart will generate uh, this statistical data for you for this new subset. You still have previous some of the previous data um, may be available, but again, it's see, uh, it's recalculating uh, statistic for new uh, subsets. Um, but what if you want to actually uh, look at the data? or maybe export the data and do something outside of Transmart. So there is two options. If you click on grid view, you, you should have uh, data available as a table. So now you have the patients uh, you selected available, and you can see it's subset 1 and subset 2, so you can see how patients dis distributed in this subset, and also you have uh, uh, data you previously selected would be available here, but if you want, let's say, I want to add uh, synthenin expression level here, so you grab whole folder and you can put it, drop it here, and now it's added additional columns. So if you didn't generate it before, you can add it uh, later. But maybe I don't want to keep race here because it's not available, so it's just taking space. So if you click on uh, this column, uh, and go into columns, you can um, unselect race and now it would not be displayed. So, um, so there is uh, this option here. And if you click export to Excel button on the uh, bottom, left, left, of, left bottom of the uh, screen, you actually export this data, which display right now, and then you can open it in, open it in Excel. Um, but again, if you're using this option, it's only export the data which you selected. It's not going to add any other uh, type of data. And uh, also, you could not export uh, expression data this way. So what if you want to actually export uh, all data, clinical data, or you want to export um, 
uh, biomarker uh, expression data. So for that option, you can go into data export tab on top, and then you have options whether you want to select just one subset or two subsets for all patients, and do you want just clinical data or um, microarray data. So let's say I only want microarray data, and on the bottom you can click Export Data tab, and uh, it will be uh, doing an export. But usually it takes some time, so if you don't want to just sit and wait, you can uh, hit Run in Background and then come back to it later. To, to find your data, you go to Export uh, Jobs, and then uh, you can see that right now it's still running, but when uh, it would be done, uh, now you will have a link, um, like it's become blue, and uh, you can see that like if you click it, it will actually download a file um, uh, to your computer. So there is different ways how you can um, uh, export data from Transmart. So this is uh, we've only looked at simple analysis so far, and um, I want to go to uh, gene signature and list uh, tab for uh, for a minute and create a gene list because it would be useful for um, other workflows we're going to look. But I just want to stop and uh, ask if there is any questions so far. Okay. Uh, if there is no questions, then uh, let's create gene, sign gene list, um, which might be useful for more advanced workflow, especially for expression type of data. So let's say you um, you read some uh, publication and it's mentioned like upregulated gene in a disease model, and you want to see how these genes behave in your study. So what you can do, you can uh, create simple file and uh, with, uh, and list the genes mentioned in publication and then use this list in a uh, workflow. Uh, you can also create gene signature which is slightly different uh, because it's uh, actually list, um, so like if you look for available, so for gene uh, list you can have, uh, you see the uh, list of genes and you can see some metadata uh, if it's listed, uh, how it's uh, been created. Um, Let's look if for uh, gene signature. So if um, gene signature was entered, then you can actually see fall change. So it's you also need to enter fall change. Um, if like in this case, it's actually uh, two downregulated genes. So to create new signature, you click new signature button, and then you need to uh, name it. So And uh, if there is red asterisk, this is required field, so signature is required. You can enter a uh, description if you uh, want to um, like remember how this uh, list has uh, been created or it might be useful uh, to other people. And then you click metadata. So again, if there is asterisk, uh, this field is required, so you have to fill them, but there is additional fields which um, you might or might not uh, fill them. So, for example, I, I get this list from uh, publication, so I select literature. If there is treatment, you can enter uh, different treatments. You can enter PubMed ID for publication. Um, but you have to enter uh, species, so this is uh, human data, and then you also need to enter enter platform. And uh, knowing exact platform is even uh, more important if you, instead of using actual gene, gene symbols, you're using uh, prop ID, because uh, then Transmart needs to translate um, and know um, exact uh, platform. So you select platform, here and then again, if you want to enter tissue or experiment type, um, you can also enter all this additional information. Uh, the last tab is uh, focus on uh, normalization methods. So if you know how the data being normalized, you can enter it here. Um, 
different analysis category and different analysis method. If you have it, it might be useful to enter. Um, you have to enter p select p-value cutoff. So um, depending if it's um, you're creating gene signatures, then you actually need to select uh, some number uh, how stringent you want it to be. Uh, if we're creating gene list, we can select undefined. Um, and then for file information, you uh, select if you have gene symbol and or prop set symbol. So, um, and then you also need to select if you're going to create a gene signature and enter actual fold change, or you can also have option uh, just using minus one for down-regulated gene, one for upregulated genes and then zero for uh, unchanged genes if you want to. Uh, but since we're creating gene list, we are using not used right now. And then we need to select file. Um, so you need to remember that file should be in uh, tab delimited text format. And um, here there is some examples how uh, it looks. If you click, it, there is. Uh, uh, example, so you can have just a list of the genes, you can have a list of the genes with a full change, uh, props ID, um, so it might be useful if you are uh, uh, doing it, uh, click on uh, samples, and then you select files, so you need to have the text file selected, and then you click uh, save. So now we have um, our list created as RBS synthenin, and if we look, this is the uh, genes uh, being um, selected. I selected by uh, this publication I mentioned um, at the beginning for uh, synthenin gene upregulated in uveal melanoma. So let's come back to uh, our study and uh, look at some advanced workflow. Let's create two cohorts with metastasis, no metastasis, um, and look at some uh, uh, data, uh, advanced workflow. So advanced workflow has have um, additional uh, pre-loaded pre uh, workflows uh, dis uh, uploaded in Transmart, so you can run for your, on your data. So let's start with table with uh, Fisher test. So table with uh, Fisher test is used when you want to compare two categorical variables and you want to see if there is any um, uh, dependency between them. So let's say we want to see if, uh, like in publication it was saying that uh, level, of, um, level of synthenin gene so I'm going to select synthenin as dependent variables was correlated with metastasis. So, um, and then you basically hit run and uh, it will calculate Fisher test uh, statistic and we can see that indeed there is a significant p with very low p-value, significant correlation between level of synthenin and uh, metastasis in this study. Um, you don't have to use um, uh, categorical, you can use uh, numerical data uh, here as well, but you, if you're using numerical data, you will have to uh, do binning. So if you're selecting, you know that you're selecting um, numerical data, then you need to select uh, that, okay, here it's uh, numerical data and I need to bin, and then you select if it's uh, what, uh, for continuous uh, data, how many bins you want to create, and then if you want uh, evenly distributed population or evenly sp uh, spaced bins, so which might slightly affect um, your um, calculations. So we can see, for example, um, if we do this way, there is, uh, again, significant difference between um, patients uh, between survival uh, and uh, metastasis. But it might be not the best way to compare uh, this dependable variable. Um, 
So if you have want to see correlation between um, numerical and categorical uh, values, then maybe a box plot with ANOVA would be better option because it basically requires one categorical, one numerical data. So again, we can uh, put, let's say, if for example, maybe I want to see tumor diameter uh, if it's at the risk correlation uh, between tumor diameter and um, level of syntonin expression in uh, this patient. Again, I can hit run and it will cal uh, calculate uh, statistic for these patients. You also uh, can since there is this high dimension data uh, tab available here, you can also use uh, actually expression data and you can select uh, okay. so we can see uh, this uh, distribution and again p-value so it doesn't seem to be statistical significantly difference between um, diameter and level of synthenin um, but okay, well, if you're using high dimension data, you express using expression data, you actually have to click this high dimensional data tab, even if you are not limiting uh, it in any way. Uh, but uh, you still have to click on it. But in this case, if you're doing a uh, box plot with ANOVA, you might want to limit it to uh, just set of genes. So, for example. Um, Maybe I am interested in P53 uh, level in, in this uh, two cohorts. And again, once you start typing, it uh, gives you options. Do you want to select just gene? Uh, do you want to select the whole P53 pathway? Uh, you can select uh, proteins it's, if it's available. It also can select, um, if I start uh, typing, um, some names I know like RBS synthenin, so this is, would be gene signature I created um, earlier. So uh, you have options if you want to limit it by like one gene, you want to look at whole pathway, do you want to look at um, uh, gene list you, you created from a study. But let's look at just one gene. So, um, and again, so because we selected um, one gene, but there is two props available for this gene. So we see that uh, it's calculate difference for each uh, prop independently. And it doesn't seem to be statistical significance between, for each of these props. But you basically can uh, go and do this type of analysis for uh, any uh, gene available. So if you want to see uh, if there is correlation between uh, two numerical data, then you want to use correlation analysis. So uh, which basically would try to uh, link to different um, numerical data. So let's see if there is correlation between uh, disease survival uh, disease-free survival and uh, tumor diameter. So again, you also have options which uh, type of correlation to use and uh, it's show you distribution, data distribution for each of this uh, numerical data and it's also calculate uh, p-value. So we can uh, tell that there is no very strong uh, correlation um, between these two. So there is additional um, correlation uh, analysis for um, which you can use, which is a scatter plot with linear regression, which again, in this case, you actually also can use high dimensional data. For example, if I want to see um, if uh, tumor diameter depends on, let's say, um, 
P53 level. So again, it uh, calculates, in this case, it's calculated for both props and uh, uh, give you, again, statistical p-value. It doesn't seem to be strong correlation between these two values, but uh, convenient for this, uh, for this, you can uh, use high-dimensional data. And also, there is options if you want to use log 10 uh, for independent variable. If uh, depending on uh, how uh, num your numbers are distributed, so let's look. Uh, so also for survival type of data, there is additional specific workflow you can use. So there is survival analysis, um, which you can do and see if survival depends on uh, any uh, category you. Uh, you want so you need some type of uh, time uh, category. So we're going to use disease-free survival and see if it changes with uh, metastasis. So uh, metastasis level. There is additional tab uh, uh, here censoring data. So if there is uh, data available for, for example, if patients are still alive um, after the clinical trial. Uh, then you can censor this data be, uh, and uh, you can enter the censoring data uh, here. Again, you can also use high dimension data uh, for uh, categories here, but you, pro you will need to select the beginning then. So let's see if there is difference in survival uh, depending on uh, metastasis. So yes, indeed, there is a big difference between survival if patients have uh, no metastasis this then uh, there is survival is much better versus uh, patient with metastasis. And then you can basically generate your uh, hypothesis and quickly do what about um, syntonian expression level? Is there any difference? Well, uh, there is some level, but it's not uh, very clear. So there is some patients uh, especially early on, for which uh, doesn't seem that MTA nine made uh, level made any difference. Um, and again, you can use ex uh, high dimension data uh, here. Let's say if P53 level uh, make any difference, but again, because it's uh, categorical data, we need to use binning and. Uh, it's continuous data, it's numerical. We need to use binning. Let's say I want to separate into uh, beans and use uh, evenly distributed population. So is, uh, is there any difference? So again, it seems that there is some benefit uh, maybe earlier. Uh, when there is a low level of uh, P53, but then it's actually re reverse for some patients, so there is no clear um, uh, answer for this one. So it, it does allow you quickly generate hypothesis and check um, this hypothesis in uh, your data. So if you want to see, um, you can also uh, compare uh, numerical and um, Categorical data, but see if it's uh, with probability of outcome of certain outcome. Um, you can use logistic regression. So you use a numerical concept as uh, uh, as uh, independent variable. So let's see if tumor diameter. Uh, predicts any outcome, let's say if tumor diameter predict, pre, can predict uh, metastasis. Um, and uh, this blue, so it basically show you distribution of numerical value for uh, no metast two category, no metastasis uh, and metastasis patient, but it's also this blue line, it uh, calculates p-value 
for uh, these patients. And you can see that there is, uh, in a surprising way, the actually patients with metastasis uh, have smaller um, tumor diameters than patients with uh, larger tumor. So you might be, uh, maybe want to like, look into it some more. Um, sometimes for categorical data, you might want to uh, look distribution of the data uh, for all patients, and you might want to use a waterfall uh, workflow. So basically, you select um, some numerical categories, and then you also uh, can select, you have to select low range or high range. So what would be considered low range? So let's say anything less than 10 um, would will consider a low range, and then anything above 15 would be considered a high range. So if you hit run, uh, now it uh, shows you uh, measurement for every single patient for this numerical value, and then depending how uh, you set your um, distribution. So we, it also covers below, uh, below 10 in, uh, as a low, uh, for like a low measurement, uh, for high measurement. So it might be useful for uh, certain uh, visual, visualization of your data where you maybe want to select this population. Also, you can uh, select it as a cohort. So if you get here, it uh, automatically populate uh, this field here. So, um, and another uh, useful workflow for high dimension data, it's a PCA analysis. So if you want to look at quality of your high dimensional data, you can do uh, run PCA analysis. So you select, again, drop your high dimension data into this bar and since it's high dimension, you have to click it, even if you're not going to limit it to anything. Um, and you can run it on uh, all uh, gene sets uh, available for uh, this microarray in this case, or you can uh, limit it. So it's up to you uh, to save time. Uh, now I'm going to um, just look like limited by signature. Um, to make it faster, uh, and basically then it's run uh, principal, principal component analysis where it's um, calculate PCA uh, values and percent, percent variance and also give you uh, different plots and you can see uh, how uh, different um, observation are distributed uh, and you can decide whether or not you like you, you have a good data, maybe some sample is outliers, uh, and you maybe you want to remove them uh, because they might affect your um, analysis too much. So uh, this is useful for uh, high dimension data. Um, let's look at uh, a few workflow which uh, basically show uh, heat map. So. It's a lot of uh, times it's useful to visualize your expression level um, and uh, have like nice uh, pic picture and very visual and representative uh, picture. So again, you use high dimension data, you drag uh, this data in this field, you click high dimension and if you want, you can limit it to certain um, uh, fields. So let's say I want to know how apoptosis uh, pathway, so maybe not just looking at gene, but looking at whole pathway uh, expression is distributed. You can limit it by, let's say, I only want to see 10 rows. I don't want to see everything. Um, and then it basically gives you a heat map of your data. Uh, 
like right now it's actually divided by subset because we have subsets selected and it only shows the top 10 uh, and you can see like how expression is distributed so green would be uh, it's down regulated red it's up regulated genes so you you can maybe make some conclusions based on this um, a lot of times it's useful to do a marker selection let's say you don't know what genes you want to look at and um, you want to find markers which are differentially expressed between two populations so you can again you can select um, your high dimension data and then uh, for, for the purpose of this training, I'm going to just limit it to, let's say, P53 uh, pathway to like make it faster. Uh, but uh, if you're running a real study, you might want to uh, run it on all data. But basically, it will then look at every single probe and calculate difference between different samples. But it might take uh, some time. And you also might uh, decide whether or not you want to aggregate multiple probes for the same genes. Uh, sometimes it makes sense to do it, sometimes not. Um, again, you also can limit it to like how many numbers, uh, markers you want to be display. Um, and if you're running it on uh, like whole data without limiting, it might take a uh, few minutes to run it but again then you can see um, like basically expression heat map of expression and basically it's trying to find um, like it's on, on top it seems that it would be um, down regulated gene in subset 2 and then at the bottom it's up regulated genes and you can see a uh, list of the genes and then it's also uh, represented as a table here. Uh, if you want to export this data, if you, cl you can click on this download row R data, which actually will give you all this table with all the values, like fold change, p-values, adjusted p-values, and um, it's also uh, will download this picture. So it might be useful um, for like save this type of analysis and maybe you want to create a gene list and study it uh, further. You can also run a metacore enrichment analysis. Um, so, and not surprisingly, so it's basically looking at which pathways are involved here uh, in this selected gene. So not surprisingly, we selected up uh, P53 pathway, so we have a lot of apoptosis type of um, pathways involved here um, and then if you actually click on uh, one of this it gets you outside to uh, and you can uh, study this pathway in more details if you need additional information so um, additional useful uh, workflow which um, my uh, which use uh, heat map it's two type of clustering there is hierarchical clustering and k-mean clustering so using different algorithm how they uh, cluster data so uh, k means basically uh, cluster data by expression level regardless of uh, how you selected your cohorts um, so again let's select uh, high dimension data and maybe look at just some signature so there is like RBS melanoma uh, genes uh, in this signature so I want to see how uh, this gene clustering in this population and maybe I want to have like four clusters again uh, if you play with clusters number it's also you might get slight um, different picture uh, since it will try to um, divide data in uh, four clusters and again it will generate this uh, heat map and um, you can see this four clusters selected and like this um, population where genes are mostly down regulated and high expressed genes some high or lower so uh, and it seems that like this 
mostly has this like first uh, cluster has uh, population from subset one, then this has subset two, and then um, has only like one patient from subset two. So you might want to like further investigate what the difference between this uh, four population of patients and uh, do additional analysis uh, with them. So is there any questions about this uh, advanced workflows? I've <clears throat> been watching the questions. I haven't seen any yet. Um, if you have a question, you can type it into the question window or raise your hand. I still don't see any questions. Okay. So, and uh, let's look at a couple uh, more advanced uh, work for specific for uh, ACGH uh, uh, arrays, so it's uh, comparative genomic hybridization arrays, which basically are looking at um, looking at uh, chromosomal alterations. So to use any of these uh, workflows, you do need to have like ACG, ACGH uh, array loaded and uh, let's say I want to only select these 80 patients from 573 patients uh, loaded for this study uh, and uh, look and go into advanced uh, workflow. So again um, I want to look at frequency uh, plot for uh, ACGH. So again, we put array data in this uh, array window, and then you can create groups you want to um, uh, see distribution, chromosomal distribution for this. So let's say if we can find some good groups. Um, let's say we want to look at different staging, let's do 3C versus 4, uh, and then uh, you run the analysis and it will generate data. So it might take some time. Um, so if you don't want to wait, you can click run job in background. And then once it's available, the data would be available in uh, this analysis uh, job tab. Uh, here in this middle bar. So I did run it earlier. So let's see how it will look. So basically uh, for our uh, two categories it will create this frequency plot for each of this group. So and you will see uh, if there is gain. Uh, it is, oh, it seems that it's was done. So you can see if there is a gain or loss of chromosomal information uh, uh, at uh, this location, so for each uh, chromosome. And you can try to see the difference. Uh, sometimes it might be convenient to compare it uh, between two groups and then you might want to use group tests if you want to find the difference between uh, these two groups, uh, some like two or more groups. Uh, so you for the region you select array and then you select this group and groups. You want to compare and then you select uh, a statistical test so you can see there is this description um, like what type of test you might want to run depending like if you have one, uh, just two groups, you have multiple groups, and then you select if you want to just look at gain, you want to just look at loss, uh, or you want to look at both. Um, and then you click run analysis and it does take a long time. So um, you, again you can put it in background and come back later. Um, so let's say I did one earlier, no, this is one running 
So the way it would look, you have a table on top which display your information. So it's chromosome, cytoband, uh, start, end position, and then p-value and uh, FDR fold change. And then at the bottom it display uh, this uh, frequency plot uh, for uh, these two groups in this case. And, um, and then you can uh, actually uh, download this result. So if you don't want to like spend and look through it like uh, right now, you can download and uh, analyze it you know, later. Um, you can also sort it by uh, like let's say p-value. Maybe I want uh, like lowest, most significant shown first. Uh, uh, similar type of analysis, but uh, looking at um, survival, so ACGH, uh, survival analysis, so basically it will look at survival information depending on, again, again chromosomal alteration, so you can uh, put uh, your array uh, here, then you need to put uh, survival time in survival uh, window, and it also requires censoring variable. So, um, so in this case, there is this vital status. So I want to put living uh, in censoring, and then again, you you want to comp uh, uh, you can select the type you want to compare gain versus no gain. So like basically norm normal, or it's you want to compare loss to normal, or you want basically compare both like loss. Uh, to normal or normal versus uh, gain. And again, then you click run and it also take uh, quite a long time, so you might want to send it to background and come back later. Um, so uh, once it's done, you can open it later and again you have this table with um, information like chromosomal information and p-values and then you can actually select and you can see show survival plot so you can see if indeed there is a difference uh, between this particular locus and survival and maybe uh, you want to investigate um, like how loss of this locus leads to uh, better survival so maybe there is some uh, uh, tumor promoting gene or something uh, so and you also can download result and study it later uh, since there is quite few, uh, a lot of data available here. Um, so there is also in Transmart there is a genome browser built in, so it's using the Alliance uh, genome browser and it's, uh, you can look at genetic and genomic uh, data uh, so let's try to find some uh, genomic data. So and uh, you can select the study and then you go into genome browser and then it's opening the track. You can see some SNP data available. Um, and if you have like no particular location, right now it's on chromosome 17, so you can type, maybe I want to go to chromosome 10, you can type and hit enter and it will bring you to this uh, location. Uh, if you know some gene uh, you're interested in, so you maybe like uh, look at the gene, let's say I want to look at P53, uh, if there is any SNPs here, so again, it will display information available and you can study SNPs. Um, unfortunately, this uh, workflow is not integrated with other workflow, so you could not um, coordin like, uh, coordinate with other workflows. But you can uh, like study some useful information. So, this is uh, 
all workflows I wanted to talk about today. So if there is any questions, I would be happy to answer. If you have a question, you can raise your hand with the dashboard or type a question into the question window or send us a chat message. If not, um, thank you, Victoria, for another excellent uh, training. Uh, we will be posting the video of this uh, on the website uh, probably within the, later this afternoon. It'll be up online for you to review. Uh, please uh, review the training schedule if there are other classes you're interested in or if you have colleagues who would like to also take uh, one of this class or a similar class, uh, please check the website. So thanks, everyone, and uh, thank you very much, Victoria. Thank you for being here.